Yo, what is going on everyone? This is Raymond Jeffries. I just want to say thank you to everyone out there checking out my channel. Thank you for checking out this midweek review video. Um, in this video, I'd like to go over kind of how my trading has been going this week and also showing you an update uh, from this past weekend's video um, and kind of showing you, um, you know, the different things, how things play down in regards to in the results and also showing you what I have on my radar currently. Um, so the pair I want to start off with in this midweek video is the Euro Yen. This was a pair that we were looking at in the midweek video in regards to we were looking to get long because we were, we were the we saw the market was trending. So we wanted to get involved with that trend. So when we starting off here on the daily, that as you notice with, if you've seen my past videos, when I do my analysis, I do a top down analysis. What that means is I start from the daily and I work my way down to kind of get an idea of what the market is doing overall. So starting off here on daily, we're kind of seeing the market was kind of channeling. We recently broke this level of structure right here, looking left. Since that point, the market kind of channeled for a little bit and it is now breaking out again from this little level of structure right here. So when we go down to the two, the four hour, we will get a clearer view of what I'm talking about. So this was that channel that we were currently in. The market was retracing and we currently broke above that level. So as we, you can see here, the market has been making nice ebbs and flows like this. Higher high, higher close higher high lower low um oh, sorry higher low and then a higher high after we broke above this level right here so when we go down to the hourly we know we have that we have that bias in regards to looking for trend trades right so we go down to the hourly and this is the the trade that i was in this that i that i posted in this past weekend review video if you guys want you can look in the top left corner i'll put a link in there where you guys you guys can check it out and kind of see the prediction i was making but just a short recap basically what i was looking at is i was looking at this move right here for gartley i was so i know like i said this was a outside return right here on the hourly so price made a higher high higher close outside return higher high higher close and we were in this outside return and i was looking for price to come back and retest the highest close so what well, the way i looked at it i was looking to get involved and i there were there were a couple different ways to get involved um, i could have waited for some type of trend continuation trade in this kill zone right here um, the way i had decided to attack the market is i was a little bit more aggressive than that i was waiting for a um, bullish garley so what that means is i go from x to a something like this x to a right here um, and i see that we hit a 618 retracement so that puts me on alert for a gar for a garley then i do a retracement from my a to b leg i make sure i at least get a 618 retracement which i clearly do right here so with that after that i look for a 127 extension of my a to b so a 127 extension lines up right there at the uh, 124.39s. So as you can see, it was a pretty decent level of structure. Pretty, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent level right here to get involved in the market. I know there was a bit of hesitation. Um, there might be hesitation from other traders out there because they might look at this little move right here where price came within a, maybe five pips of there, reverse hit what would have been possible target ones here. And they may have thought, you know, all oh, the move has been made, you know, or they don't want to get involved as you can see right there. But for me, you know, unless price comes within two pips of my entries, um, and then reverses and hits target ones, then I keep my orders on there. And you know, this is a clear reason why, because as you can see, price did come down. Price did hit my entries down here. Let me show you what it looks like. So it looks like this, X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D. See, that was that C to D completion where it was close. Instead, I got filled right here. And the way I attacked this market was because I know that we're in a trending market, right? So that allowed me to be a little bit more aggressive with my with, the, with my targets and where I'm looking to get off, to get out of this position. Um, normally on these type of trades, normally um, on um, pattern trades, the 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 exits, sorry, the the profit targets are a 382 and a 618 retracement from that A to D leg. So what that means is initially your targets would have been here but as price moves down against you you have to adjust your targets so this the 124 76s 78s would have been my target one 
and 135.07s, or sorry, 125.07s to 09s, depending on how much you front run by, would have been my target twos. But because I know that we're in a trending market, I was able to be a little bit more aggressive and I was actually using this as a trend trade, a, a entry signal for a trend trade. So this just shows you how you can kind of use what is a pattern entry, which normally is a counter trend setup to get involved in a trend trade. Um, of course, I back tested this. I know this is profitable for me. So, you know, if you plan on doing this, involve, using this in your trading, make sure you guys back test it and check it out for yourself. But that's how I got involved with this trade. And then I ended up taking targets actually up here at 125 at the highest close at 125.44s. So I ended up getting out of the market right here where the market came up, retested 125.50s, a nice even handle number um, before reversing. But you know I was out of my position at that point, so I was kind of happy. I was happy. I held on to the trade. Happy. I made sure I got involved. You know I didn't get fear from seeing the market come spike down, almost fill me. Um, that's the important part of following your plan. So now you ask yourself, what can you do in this market? You know what's going on. So. And, and kind of what I'm looking at. And we know that price has recently broke above this level of structure right here. So we know the trend is continuing higher. So you may want to ask yourself, okay, where do I think the market is going to go? And we can get a clear view of that on the daily. And I know this is a level I was predicting um, in, in a level I was predicting before in regards to where I think we're going to go overall. I think the next level of structure we're likely to test is 126.76s. As you can see, this was a level that was tested a couple times in the past. Um, we broke above this level where I expected somewhat of a little bit of a stall, which was around 125.25s, and it looked, this is the next level I'm looking for us to test. So with that in mind, I know where I'm expecting price to go. I know we're in a trending market. That kind of clarifies, okay, I'm not going to take any type of counter trend trade here because there's no structure for me, you know, so now I can clearly focus on one side of the market and that one side of the market is a trending market. So how do I want to get involved? So this is my this is my kill zone right here. So if this is my kill zone. This is the initial area where I'm looking to get involved is right here. So that that little the highest high, the, the wick between the highest high and the highest close um, of that previous out of that previous um, new structure high. So if I can get some type of double bottom here on the 15, I can look for some type of quick strike, you know, just a quick little um, really good risk reward right here and then get involved with the retest of the highs. Uh, I'm not looking for any type of extensions. That's not the type of trader I am. I'm just looking for a retest. But if we don't end up getting that double top and price continues to retrace, then I'm just looking for a higher, higher, higher close in this area. Um, you can look for price to return to this little, this little area right here and look for that higher high higher close with you can and possibly hiding stops below here but you have to be mindful that this whole area is the outside return price can re retrace anywhere into this zone and still be in a in a, in a valid trend so you if you're going to place your stops below here for safety you have to understand if price does come further down here you would have to enter again you have to be okay with entering the price twice and if you're not okay with that then you're just as soon as you get a higher high higher close you get it you you are as soon as you get your signal to enter the market you buy it up and you push your stops at the safest position which would be down here below that outside return um i don't know if you guys can see this but what another reason for entry i'm eyeballing on this uh, although i don't trade ciphers on this so i like i said not personally I, I would be eyeballing this this is another reason for entry you can look for an x to a a to b b to c and a C to D completion down here. We do have a bullish cipher setting up as well. If you want to get involved that way, you can get involved as, as like I said, as a reason for entry, kind of like how I got involved with the Gartley on this pair and use that as a reason for entry to look for a trend continuation set up higher into the highest, the highest close. But you have to be mindful of where your stops are. Stops are below X, which is great. And um, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a couple different ways to attack it. That's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not even looking to get short at any point, um, at, at least not yet until we hit another level of structure. Um, right now, like I said, it's just beautiful when you have a plan that clarifies. You can look at the market and know exactly how you want to attack it. And this is how I'm looking to attack it. You may see it differently, but this is the way I'm going about it. 
Um, the next pair I have um, on my radar right now is the Pound Yen. So starting off here on the Pound Yen, this is the one pair that gave me my loser this week. Um, like I was involved in three trades basically overall, two winners, one loser. Um, one was that Euro Yen trade I just went over, which was a winner. I was involved in a bullish bet on the Euro Dollar, which was a winner, and this was my one loser. Um, it, it wasn't that bad of a trade. It was a good trade. It just happened to be a loser. You know, it is what it is. That's a part of trading. But starting off here on the daily, kind of get a clear view of what's been going on recently. We can see that price has kind of been channeling in this area. Um, you can see the, the the high test wicks. We basically have indecision in the market, and it wouldn't be surprising to look left and see that we're in a structure zone right here, a direct level of structure looking left that we are unable to break at this time. So going down to the four hour, you get a clear view of what was going on here. You can see that, let me erase that. No, knowing that this level of structure higher, we can see price was basically channeling between these two points right here. So in my weekend review video, what I was looking for um, on the hourly, I was looking for price to kind of come down into the zone get some type of double bottom, uh, which we never got for a reason for entry, so I never got involved with that. Instead, what you saw was price kind of re reverse and go to the other channel, the other end of that channel at the higher end. Um, when that happened, I was looking at the market, okay, so how could I get involved for a possible counter trend move up here? What I saw was something like this. I saw a reason, my reason for entry was a bearish bat. So we go X to A, A to B, we get that 50% retracement, B to C, we get at least a 382 and a C to D completion up here at the 886 at 139.07s. So this is a uh, this is actually uh, like a little, I don't want to say a lesson, but something I learned um, along my trading. There's a couple different ways to attack this market when it comes to, to this type of entry. I don't know if you guys know this, but these type of patterns that uh, that you take, and depend, well, I guess depending on your entry type. Me, I just put limit orders because I, that's the way I backtested. I know it's profitable that way, but these are actually very aggressive ways to enter the market. I know you may be thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I, I actually didn't realize this until later on in my trading that this is actually a very aggressive way to enter the market. And this is something that you have to determine how you want to trade yourself um, because it, it may be different for you in regards to your personality and how you like to trade. So what I mean by when it being aggressive is the fact that I have a limit order here for entry. And so I, I basically trade three different styles I, or three, three different type of setups. I trade patterns like this. Well, I guess within patterns, there's a couple different patterns I trade. Um, so I trade patterns like a, like a bad, a, a garly, a cipher where I use limit orders. I trade a um, counter, trend st counter trend style in a way that CTS is combined technical score and I trade a trend continuation style. So the, the, the CTS style is more of, like I said, more of a counter trend trade, a counter trend style, sorry. So uh, when I went back to when I you know reviewed my trade, I went over this to look at, okay, how could I have gotten involved? Um, what could I have done differently? How could I have known? So in looking at this, and viewing it as a counter trend trade, you know, if I was using my CTS, I actually would have never been involved in this trade. And the reason for that is because for my CTS, I have I need a lower low, lower close, or some type of double top. Um, and that is actually, you know, because it's a little bit more conservative, I guess, when you look at it that way. It, well, no, it is more conservative because I need some type of confirmation candle, uh, candle formation or something like that. As opposed to patterns, if, if you just trade it with the limit order there, it's very aggressive. And this is important because you have to be okay. If you're going to take patterns and you back tested it this way and you back tested it with, lim with the limit orders out there, you have to be okay with taking a loser like I did on this one and and understanding that, hey, this is an aggressive entry. I know that if price comes to this area, I want to get involved. Knowing that, you know, oh, oh man, if I could, if I took this another way and I took it with another type of setup, I wouldn't have been involved. Maybe I'll take that setup next time. And say so you do that next time and this is a completely valid setup for you and you wait for, like I said, market could have came here and I could have waited for a, a CTS style setup, and then in, instead of never, and I never got in market just reverses right there. 
and I would be mad because I didn't take the bat, which was a valid bat. So you have to just have to make sure you follow your plan when it comes to this, and you have to be okay with taking these losers and, and understanding that you know not one setup is better than the other. There are there are upsides and downsides, pros and cons to each. Because like I said, if the market came here and just reversed off of that level, I was happy that I was involved in this aggressive entry. If market came up, you know, in this type of situation where I'm I. I got in I got triggered into the trade and just reverses or sorry continues up and I get stopped out then that's a con cuz I'm going to I'm going to be involved in every winner and loser when it come, when I have this aggressive entry as opposed to CTS where I might be not I might have not involved been involved with this loser I might I wouldn't have been involved with any type of winner as well as like save the market reverses at that point and hits targets or reverses and goes all the way down to the other side of the channel something similar to this right here where if i was an aggressive trader i could have gotten involved in this move right here this higher high higher close shooting for the other end as opposed to waiting for some type of double bottom confirmation and then getting involved so there is no one way to be involved in these trades there's no one best way it you just have to weigh the pros and cons and kind of how your personality works out and what's best for you so you're looking at this market now, you may be asking yourself, hey, you know, the market broke above here. I'm looking for, you know, a trend continuation setup. Me personally, I'm not looking for any type of trend trade in this market at all. And you're asking yourself, okay, well, Raymond, why are you doing that? You know, we, clearly the market broke above this level of structure, but the importance of knowing where you're at in your higher time frame. So when you go, when we were looking at the higher time frame, remember, we're at a level of structure directly looking left. So... I know we're in a level of structure right here. Do I really want to get long and we're or looking for a trend trade knowing that we're in this higher level of structure? No. From well, I guess me personally. Some people don't value structure, so they might want to get long here. Me personally, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting till we get a break above this level, the 13970s. We get a break and close above and then just look for some type of retracement. So that will look something like this. You know, Mark is channeling right here. It could reverse, could go higher. But if we do happen to go higher from here, I'll wait for that clear break above that structure level. Then I look for some type of retracement that I can get involved in where, say, this is where the market channeled before uh, the break. I can look for some type of retracement into this level right here to play for a move higher. I don't have to be involved in every move in the market. And that's what I think a lot of newer traders out there have to learn. You don't have to be involved in every move. You want to be involved in the best and highest probability moves. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting for some type of break above that higher level of structure. Say if market rejects this level and breaks lower instead, say we get some type of double top, which it looks like it's forming here. Say the market breaks down and we break below here instead, then I'm looking for some type of trend continuation move lower. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm being fluid with the way I'm looking at the market because I don't know where the market's gonna go. I, I'm just preparing myself either way. So I'm not shocked and I'm not, I'm not panicking depending on the way the market goes. Um, yeah, so that's the analysis I have on this. Like I said, I'm just kind of waiting to kind of see what the market does before I'm getting involved. The last pair I have for this midweek video is the Aussie dollar. All right, so starting off here on the Aussie dollar, let's see what's going on here on the daily. Um, we can see that price has pretty much been channeling higher. We broke this level of structure right here, looking left, and we are currently in a channel. Um, if we go down to the at four hour, you'll get a clear view and see that this see the big channel that we're in. It kind of looks something like this, like that. Um, Trend lines aren't perfect. I know. I don't. I don't really care. Um, it's just the idea, kind of the the visual of where we're at. If you want to be a little more exact and look something like this, I guess. Um, it really just depends on how you draw trend lines. But the the concept is the most important thing. I know that we're kind of channeling higher, but at the same time we're making a new structure high, outside return, new structure high, and outside return, high, outside return, a high, high, higher close. And then we don't um, we don't get a new structure high right here. Um, instead, the market comes up retest. I mean, it's it's always hard. You have to have a rule for this. I need a new structure high from this level, and we never got it. Um, you may ask yourself, hey, this is a new structure high right here. No, it isn't. Um, for me, in my rules based way of looking at new structure highs, I would need a I would need a break and close above this level right here. Um, to confirm this bullish trend to continue or to expect to move higher. 
Um, and I, we don't, since we don't get that, I mean, I know we're still in a bullish trend because we're going to be in a bullish, we are in a bullish trend until this, this outside return is broken. So I know that we're in a bullish trend. It's just, I can't expect price to move higher. So with that being said and being understood going down to the hourly time frame, what are, what does it look like we're doing? It looks like we're in a channel. It looks like we're basically channeling. So when we're coming down here, we're looking at a couple different structure points. For me, this is a clear level of structure at the top end of the range. And this right here is a level of structure at the lower end of the range. This was that previous outside return. Being mindful that there is a level of structure directly below it because there was a really deep retracement on this on the higher time frame. This is another level of structure right here, but this is the most direct level of structure we have in regards to a level of support. So I'm looking at this, I look at once the market breaks above one of these two locations, okay, I know that if it breaks below here, then we are no longer in a bullish trend. We're in a bearish rotation possibly. It doesn't mean we're in a bearish trend. It just means that we're in a bearish rotation and we could see a reversal. And basically what that means is we're in consolidation. And if we get a break above here, then I know, okay, I can look to get bullish because we're in a bullish trend. Until that point, we're in consolidation, my eyes at least. And while we're in consolidation, there's a couple different ways to attack the market. Um, or, you know, depending on the way you trade, of course. Uh, I always have to put that caveat in there. Um, I can look for well, a couple different ways. You can wait for price to come to these two levels of structure. Look to get involved in some type of counter trend move. Um, in regard, you look for a double top, double bottoms in these two areas. Um, you know, these retests of these zones with clear levels of stops below these two levels of major structure. Or, or and actually, you can look to get involved in patterns if you're a pattern trader. And you may be looking at this and you're seeing, okay, what kind of patterns do we have in here? Me personally, it depends on how your how your eyes visually see it. And, you know, if you've tested it, I tested this as an X to A. It looks something like this. A lot of people would see this retracement right here and then see this as not an X to A leg. I do because we didn't get a, a higher, a higher, high, higher close from this initial test on here on the left side. Um, so for me, the way I tested it, I tested this as being an X to A for me as well. Um, so for me, that's an X to A leg. And we come down, we hit, this is very close. Check your data because I know when I was doing this, it looks like it could be either a Gartley or it could be a bat. Um, so right here, we can see that it's 7139. And we come here and we have 7140. So that is very close to being a, a difference between two different patterns. Um, if we, if you, depending, like I said, depending on your data, if we hit that 618, then it becomes a, um, then it becomes a Gartley pattern. For me, because it didn't hit the 618 and it hit the and, uh, furthest it went was the 50%, then it's a bat pattern. So make sure you check your data on that. So with that bat pattern, we have an X to A, A to B right here, that, that lowest low, that 50% retracement. We make sure we have a, at least a 382 on that B to C leg, which we clearly do. Um, I don't need to put it on there, I can visually see it. And a C to D completion down here at the 886. So we have that bat pattern up there. We have a set. If the market continues down, we have that for entries. And we also have a cipher pattern as well, a bear cipher pattern. So what that looks like right here, we start off from this higher leg right here. We have an X to A. So we make sure we at least hit a 382, which we do. And then on that, that B to C leg, we make sure we hit a 127 extension which we do, you can see right here. And then that C to D leg is gonna be a, we go from A to D and we look for a 786, which would be somewhere up here. So we have an X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C, oh wait, and a C to D completion up here at the 786 for a completion of a cipher pattern. Um, so this is you know one of those good things about trading patterns and in this type of consolidation where a lot of people just can't really get involved because they don't really see much we have these type we have these patterns which you know thrive in these type of uh in these type of areas where we're looking to get involved and we know that we can kind of map these areas out ahead of time 
So I know I have orders set down here. If price comes down here and hits the hits my entries for this bat, I know I'm getting involved. I have my my um, buy limit order out there, a very aggressive buy limit order out there. I have my stops below X, and I know that if price breaks higher, then I have my sell limit order up here for the for the Aussie dollar with my stops below X as well. So that just a couple different patterns we have on the radar for this one. Uh, we don't really know where price is going to go, so just be mindful of that. Uh, well, we never know where price is going to go. If you do, let me know so I can give you all my money and you can trade it for me. But uh, yeah, so like I said, good thing about these patterns, we can map it out ahead of time. We know what we're doing. We're in consolidation. We we're waiting for either a break above this level, break below this level in order to look to get aggressive in regards to looking for... Uh, trend continuation type setups so until that point that's what i have on my radar all right so that was the last pair i have on my portfolio for this midweek review video uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below let me know if our analysis line up or if they're different i like having different people's perspective on the market and you know discussing different things uh, I, I find value in that, and I think it's helpful to any other traders out there who are maybe just getting into trading to show that we can all help each other out. We don't have to, we're not adversaries in the market, you know. Uh, we can all be helpful to other traders along the way. I know that's what I'm doing, and that's why I want to help make these videos, help traders who used to be like me in regards to, you know, not having a clear view of the market, not understanding how to how to read a market, number one, and how to go about doing your analysis on a day-to-day -day basis to be consistent. And if you guys, like I said, found value in this, hit that like and subscribe button down below and that reminder button or that notification button to let you guys know when a new video is being released to make sure you guys don't miss any of my releases in the future. Um, yeah, so hopefully, like I said, you guys have a great rest of your trading weeks and I will see you in the weekend review video. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.